got here let's see right there oh you moved the screen moved on me bloop, 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 bloop. there we go now she's in the box <laughs> how are you oh my god thank you so much for coming on hi 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 thank you thank you so much for letting me be on the show i'm good darling um hi to everyone from barcelona uh Today's been a good day, girl, because finally we've been let out from our houses to do exercise. Oh, I mean, freedom! It is. I mean, I I don't really do the outdoor running, so it's just it's just we can go out for four hours and walk or do exercise on your own. But the thing is, as long as you wear some like like a, tr a tracksuit, you know, just kind of. I think that's just, how we've been trying to trick the system, actually, because they <laughs> even here, like you, all of a sudden, everyone's a runner. Everyone, everyone Nobody exercised athlete. beforehand, and now all of a sudden everybody's a runner. Oh, but yeah. I'm just going to get beer. And then they do like a little stretch. We're allowed to get that before nine, right? So it's all good. We can do that. <laughs> dumbbells. So you've got your cans of beer and their dumbbells as well. So it's good. How are you though, man? More importantly, how, how's life been treating you? I mean, I'm living the dream. I guess is what they always say. The 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 good old American dream. I think we're all kind of in the same boat right now. I've just been kind of hanging oh. out and waiting to get orders on what's going on myself. So I'm one of those though that I have actually thrived, not really having to go out and talk to three dimensional people all the time. So I don't know what that says about me <laughs> but when they were like you can't go see people and I'm like oh okay I guess oh, shit. all those times I canceled before I got to it's illegal now guys I can't I can't go I'm sorry you know but uh <laughs> doing well otherwise you do have a point though because it's because obviously you miss your friends and you miss whatever but when you think back how many times a day do you actually interact with people that you really don't like or you really don't want to Girl, I'm a server. I'm a server. <laughs> it was pretty much every day. <laughs> it was pretty much every day. Oh man, hospitality. I'm sure we could exchange a few war stories about hospitality. The starting and I love how cool hospitality. <laughs> right, the hospitality part. I mean, it's always our pleasure. Of course, yeah. that's regular coffee. It's not decaf. And yeah, no, of course that's a skinny latte. We only have full fat. No, of course. Of course. Let me just make it a little lighter. We'll blow some more bubbles in there. And then there you go. It's a light coffee. <laughs> I'm about to count all of it for you guys. Excellent. Oh. Well, it's good to see you kept super busy since I've had you on the show last. I'm telling you, what? looking it up, you've got, you've got kept yourself going. What? Well, I've been lucky actually because um, the most recent thing, well, after Shapeshifting Detective, um, I then got involved with Tiana Studios. Yes, yes, Who. yes. Lovely, lovely people. Yeah, there. so that was really cool. That was a lovely project to get involved in. Shout out to Darren. Obviously, Rupert's in it. Of course. Um, of, course. of course. I mean, it wouldn't be an FMV game if, if one of us weren't with each other. I was going to say, like, you two are pretty much now the F&B stars. You're, you're getting that, right? Oh, right? for the love of God, we are not. I think we're just, I think people just run out of names. They're just like, oh, well, well, if she does it, he'll probably do it. I don't, we're not stars. <laughs> you're like, well, you know, if we caught her and do it, do you think they're just trying to grab Roops out? Just like, out? Deal. We're, just, we're not stars, we're red dwarves. No, but um, what was I going to say to you? So that was fun. And then hopefully, so that's coming out soon, I think. Yeah, it is. Dark Side of the Moon. He's like, uh, keep your eyes on it. It's coming. It's coming soon. No, I, I mean, I have to, God bless Darren. He's been having his coming soon for the past six months. Um, and it's like the longest. It's I, I think there should be a Guinness record for that because that's been the longest coming soon release date I've ever witnessed in my life. 
My heart goes out to all all these devs though, because unfortunately, with the what's been going on in the world, it's it's caused a lot of delays for a lot of developers. They're they're regearing on how to do all these things from home now, as opposed to going into their offices every day like they used to, and it's oh, it's slowed some things down. It's slowed some things down, but it's, yes, he but, is very hopeful. Soon, we did have him on the podcast last week. Darren, oh, how is he? But he, how is he doing? freaking awesome as always like he's a pleasure of course we're gonna have to have him back on and of course you know I'm gonna try to steal all of you when dark That's side of the moon enough. is closer to release of course when we find out a solid date we're easily stealable uh, you say, if you get yeah, sick of my face between now and then I'm sorry no I don't, think I, could. I don't think I ever could and then um after actually after dark side 15 bits the 15 yes bits. That was so random. And this was actually, I have to thank you for this, actually, the say, because I, yes, yes, this is a very important announcement. This is a very important announcement. So I saw that you were, you're like, an, uh, you, you're you in the game, right? You're, they rotoscoped like, me in as an extra. Yeah. So I did like a few things in front of my green screen, sent it over, and then they, whatever was usable for them. Yeah. Well, exactly. So I, obviously, I'm a fan of yours. So I thought, yeah. And I was, I, yeah, true. And I tweeted, I was like, go, oh, she's amazing. And then Martin Borassa, you know, Martin yes, Borassa. Yes, yes, yes. Lovely gentleman. Very much lovely, so, yeah. Yeah, a lovely French Canadian man. I told <laughs> him how to use WhatsApp. That's a random fact. I did. I told people, use WhatsApp. It's expensive for us What's in that? Europe. I'm, I'm looking at you, lady. I'm looking okay, at you. Okay, I'll get it put back on my phone. <laughs> say I had it at one point in time and then I never used it so I probably bumped it for a game or something so I could have space on my phone I don't blame you yeah when you've got no memory left you're like but I really want to take the selfie and you're like oh god damn it deleting family photographs that are you're like oh I'm sure I'll find it they look the same Minds, which has never let me down. Um, so I, uh, anyway, we're, oh, I love the tangents we're taking. So we'll get back to WhatsApp in a second. Anyway, oh yeah, so that's right. Yeah, Martin reached out. He's like, uh, I have a business. I, I have a business proposal for you. Um, he doesn't sound like that. I was going to say, I really hope so. Martin, are you watching? Was, she the, nailed it, right? I mean, you you can tell he's French Canadian, but like, he just doesn't sound like he just fell off the Eiffel Tower. Like, it's like. <laughs> Well, it's my baguette, uh, like, <laughs> where la bibliothèque. I'm oh, we so mean, well, yeah. I'm going to oh. get into so much trouble because I'm clearly not woke enough. Apparently, I'm, I've just probably insulted a whole, a whole like, niche well, of people. Well, as long as you include yourself in it, I think. Then oh, God, yeah, clear. I'm always insulting myself. It's the backbone of any actor. Um, So, and then he's like, I have a business proposal for you. But, you know, I don't know, when someone says, and it must be a lost in translation thing, but cause when someone says this to you, and I was like, oh, yeah. Corona. Oh no. Am I allowed to say this? Yes. No, please. We're all, I don't know. Are you? I don't, I guess I should ask you. I'm not, I don't know the story yet. Well, here's the thing. I know if you put this on YouTube, (laughs) if you say the full thing, you might get demonetized. You get monetized. Oh, that I forgot about that. No, I don't make money. We're good. You're fine. (laughs) The thing that we shan't speak of. Right. And I was like, okay, business proposal. What do you want me to do? Like, invest in his game so i i like i mean this is terrible. <laughs> you were like what money you think i got i'm a producer and a rosa butler yes yeah, I I what am i gonna do and then he's like no would you you know would you like to audition for this and i said oh thank you so much so that was the story so i have to thank you for that because oh. for interacting so thank you very much see this is how the fmv community yeah. is with each other you see we're good people it's a community it really is especially on twitter man because twitter can be such a quagmire <gasps> Oh. It, well, yeah, I never cracked that code really either, but I just, unless you have a hot take, that's all I found. If you're willing okay. to stir the pot and have a hot take, now, you will you get clicks. I am not hip to the max. What What is a hot take? So like, it's- I'll just <laughs> use one example from the streamer world, right? Yes. And we've all seen this on our streamer Twitter. Boobs are very <laughs> controversial. They this are. is apparently make or break whether I get views or not. I didn't know if you knew that, but there is a I, certain group of people that believes that. I've yet to experience the full benefit of owning them myself in this vein, but regardless, that's a hot take. So if I were to go on Twitter and say, I'm stealing all of your views because of my boobs, I'd probably get a lot of people that want to contradict me on that or agree with me on that or retweet that hot take simply because I was willing to stir the pot. Ah, 
well then I am not cool enough to do any of that. If there were to be a hot take, it would be very, it would be by mistake. Probably I did one time and it wasn't even on purpose. I didn't realize it was because I made the joke about the whole boobs thing, but I said it was men with beards who were streaming. I can't believe all these men with beards are stealing my views. And I went on this whole thing and like posted some pictures of some top streamers and some people appreciated, some people did not. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first foray into anybody giving two craps about what I tweeted. And I went, oh, and I'm scared of that side of Twitter. So I've, I've since then not had a hot take that I was willing to do. I'm scared of that side of Twitter. Can I ask, what was like the weirdest or like the most evil thing that was written? Can you oh, say? my God. I don't know if I want like there are so many people. Were, hmm. or not, not for baseball, but like huh? they were the they didn't, they're not, you don't have to say it word for word. Oh, some people were calling me idiots and a, and a moron for even having this take because they couldn't get the joke. I even put it at the bottom, like, by the way, this is satire since I know some people have lost the ability to, like, make a joke about things. And there was a lot of people on my side going, I can't believe you even have to say satire. We can't even learn that anymore. And then some people were just telling me to go away because Lyric doesn't use a face cam. And I'm like, it was a joke. <laughs> and not only that, sometimes he does it on sub only. So sometimes oh, you do man. get to see his face I don't know man I thought it was funny it made me laugh made some people laugh and it made some people think I was a moron and either way that's my oh, clout story there you go I love it my one I guess clout I just story. need to go to I have to go to woke school to figure out all, to figure out I, have you ever done um periscope on no. twitter oh I've seen it but oh. I've not done it Gal, I did it for a few times because back in the day I used to present a radio show very early in the morning over yes. here. So I thought, oh, okay, let's go on Periscope. Facebook Live is like, imagine Facebook Live is like the party. You know, you want to get in, you're grand. Facebook Live, yeah, I mean, you have to be slightly, you know, you have to watch your P's and Q's because you might get copy written. But Twitter is not the house party you want to go to. It is the crack den that you've accidentally stumbled into. And before you know it, you're getting stabbed. Oh no! And then you know what I got told. This is what I got told once <laughs> on on Periscope. Well, no, they, I have a couple of cracking one-liners. One guy wrote in, "Hey, Halloween is over. Why are you still wearing your mask?" That was one. And then another one. <laughs> Did he have like the egg um, picture? Oh, like it was oh, a brand oh, new account. Egg, or yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, stop it. And then, but then another guy. No, I think this guy actually was like an economist or something and had kids because I went into his, his. I think he had six followers on on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You never trust them. Like That's what I was asking, like a brand new account just to troll you or something like that, yeah. And then another person said, I looked 30% lesbian, 70% crack addict. That was very specific, very specific. That is very how... specific. Yeah, and that was at like seven o'clock in the morning. Could you imagine, let's say, it'd just be like, you're just there. <laughs> And here's I'm today, you know, a bit of Spice Girls, and all of a sudden I'm being called like. You know what that's ugly. taught me though? My one hot take: don't read what? the comments after like two or three hours. You've just got to like not read them because like the more I would go through it, the less I hated myself, and there was no reason why I should have. And I just was like, I left it alone. And once I was like, I'm not going to read anymore after like an hour or two. I have no idea what else was put on there. Don't scroll down. That's oh, the that's yeah. the best advice. Just don't scroll down. It just <laughs> it's just crazy. So yeah, so um, so yeah, so, so to all your viewers, social media is great. I love it, and uh, <laughs> we're nailing it. This is the perfect way to go. Excellent. Well, it is a good way to get the word out though because I know that you you take pretty good advantage of like Instagram and stuff as well which is one area that I falter in really badly which we were talking about a little bit before we got started here today but it's a funny one but that's thanks to and again he's gonna hate me for calling him my, my manager but he is my manager like he is my manager and he's just he's he's kind of set me on the path of like just do it like this because sometimes Instagram if you just if you scroll way down even though I've tied it up a bit I think there was just pictures of like my sh my feet, like my shoes, like if I bought a new pair of shoes. It wasn't important, but it wasn't for the brand, because you know, let's say we're all brands right now. So what's your brand? I'll find my day, yeah. <laughs> you know, so no, it's true. It's... The, the best advice I was given regarding Instagram was actually from another casting director that I saw online, and they're like, "Think of it as your CV. It's basically your visual CV. What do you want to promote about yourself?" That's actually not wrong because people I, will dig back even super far on some of those as soon as you start to hit a certain level because there there are those people that want to find those things that could possibly like 
be a little of a controversial take. My beard tweet's going to come back to haunt me in like 10 years. Just you wait. Oh, you wait. and they'll be like, cancel. Do you like <laughs> exactly. That? She How hates died. beards. Confirmed. Oh, no, I love 2019. them. I uh, it's a cancel culture. You're like, no, that's, I, th- I think we're out of that. Or are we still in that? Is that, uh, are we, no, do we know? I've learned to ca- like shut it down. There's, there, you come a point where there's too much internet for the day. And you've just got to like, no, I don't know that I want to participate in that. Where's my memes? I need to get lost in memes is what it is. That's all I'm looking for. That's all I want. This is a funny creative memes for the situation of whatever we're in. <laughs> but I, You know, when memes first came out, um, this shows my age. I was like, what the hell is a meme? Like, what, what is what is this all this? What's a, I know. What's can a I, meme? I was like, can I be honest with you? Yeah. I'm still not sure why it's called a meme. <laughs> i've tried looking up why we got emmy emmy for why it is what it is and i i don't i still don't know that i understand how we called it so if anybody knows i'm I, i'm i'm happy to learn and have this be a teachable moment but i out of all of my googling i couldn't figure out why meme was the word we decided to give it I mean, is it a play on Mimi? As in, like, me, myself? Mimi? You would think, maybe I just don't know how to Google. Because I'm like, I'm looking up all these things. I'm like, I can just find it on my own. Like, I'm an independent woman, right? Like, I can type. But no, I couldn't find any answer. Oh, it's related to something to biology? So maybe you might be right. Like, what? Richard Dawkins, he coined the term in the selfish gene as a gene, but for information instead of biological instructions. Ah, and I even got the wiki. Here we go. Chat to the rescue. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. makes a heck of a lot more sense than what I was trying to come up with. I was just like, I just accept things sometimes. If I'm like, that's just what it's called, and that's fine. It it is what it is. Let's not delve any deeper into that. Let's not search for the truth. I've never argued why this is called a table. I've just accepted we've called it a table, and I've moved on with my life. You know what I mean? So, like, I just go, this is just the easiest plan of attack right here. Man, I'm loving how we're, like, bringing philosophy into this. Is this a table, or am I the table that's in front of it? Oh, we could get into all of that. True. But then, like, why is the t- does the table even exist? Uh, yeah. No one is there to see the table. We could go into that whole thing. Is the table oh. in there? Oh Lord! I mean, I don't have any alcohol, and it's far too early for you to start falling down the rabbit hole. It's quarantine, oh. baby. It's whatever time of the day I feel like. Oh. It really is just coffee, but for the effect, yeah. I thought we should should drink out of it. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Dark Side of the Moon, though, because yeah. this seems like, at least in the FMV genre, a little different of a character for you. And yeah. I've enjoyed watching the little clips there, especially like back and forth, just the differences between the games that I've seen you in. And of course, I've gone back and watched some of your uh, like movies and, and shorts and stuff like that that I could get a hold of. But yeah, let's talk about Alex. Alex With a Y. Why? With a there Y. Yes. With a y. Although, yes. uh, here's another precursor. So or what we you were can't like, talk yeah. about, because I know he said, like, it's hard to oh. talk about story and stuff like that, so. Oh, so, well, well, then when we, were, when we were promoting Alex with a Y, then somebody tweeted, there's another female character with with a Y in it as well, so. There's no who was first? I, I guess it doesn't know. matter. Doesn't matter, does it? So, Alex no. with a Y. So, this is what happened. Darren, um... I contacted Rupert through Twitter. You see, this is the good thing about Twitter. It is reachable, you know what really I mean? Is. Yeah. And, and, and so through a couple of conversations, he got through to me and he's like, look, I've got this game. I thought, oh, awesome, brilliant. Send me through the script. He didn't have Alex with the Y in the original script. He had just written her up and he didn't really know what she, who she was, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a computer geek and she's a really good hacker, but we only really had that. So I went over to the UK to shoot um, a, just she had a tiny part initially just a small part and then Rupert who was doing um, a couple of things behind the scenes as well he he kind of he, between him and Darren they were like why don't you make her like this and thus I just went with it and thus Alex with a Y was born that's and really she's, cool so you all got to kind of collaborate and bring her to life together yeah and it was a very quick turnover it was literally that day that we were shooting because I had to shoot off back to Barcelona Oh. So, uh, uh, Rupert said, this, this, this. Darren was like, yeah, work with that, and then just go. And um, so we shot that, and then we went back to retweak a few things. And mm-hmm. so when I went over Christmas, we shot some more scenes, and we 
we made her into a lot a bigger character for the for the show. That's really cool. So is that the first time you've gotten the opportunity to be able to sit down and actually create a character with yeah. the, the lovely. It's a really lovely yeah. process. Um but it's a weird one because you don't want to insult people either, right? Because oh, sure. you don't want to be you know, it's she, still their like, baby. We are kind of still the prop bringing it to life. Yeah, I could. Yeah. You know, and you think cliches because you know yourself in, in acting as well. Like if not every not every hacker is the same. Like, you know, there are hackers that are just, you know, the most sociable people in the world and that are smoking cigarettes, d- drinking martinis while they're mm-hmm. breaking into the Pentagon. And then there's the more extreme, I suppose, like Alex with Hawaii, who are just more shy and conservative so it's just trying to find that balance and and just not annoying and just not annoying people and going oi I don't do that and then you're like well yeah you do a little bit but I kind of you know. observed you for like a month to get the character <laughs> so I'm sorry to me tell you I your window <laughs> Through a bush. <laughs> Just watch a bunch of like, what is that? Uh, uh, robot, Mr. Robot, right? Was that their whole deal too? Was just like oh, hacking the whole God. thing. That's amazing. I love that. That made, that was brilliant. Yeah. I really did yeah. love it, honestly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I can't wait to see that though. So that makes it even more interesting. So, so what do you think uh, that you guys really honed into with the character that? you guys saw that she could come so much more to life than just this small piece that Darren might have initially put in there. I, well, the thing is, after we shot her first scene, almost like her promo shot, If you, it, it was almost like her promo scene, if you think about it. He showed it to a few people and they're like, oh, we really like this character because within the whole realm of the game, because as you know, there's the evil, evil warlord that is Gideon, which is Rupert. Yes. And, and then there's a, I know, right? He is mm-hmm. scary as I've never hell. Never seen that side of him before. I'm really excited to see that too. Well, yeah. Well, you know, I'm like way better. Off, off screen, yeah. He's like that all the time. No. <laughs> he's always <laughs> coming around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just <laughs> shouting at little children to get out the way. Um, um, I knew him and I got along for a reason. Yes. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Um, and so when we, so he showed this the scene to people, and they thought, oh, well, this. She might just be the comic relief in the because when you think about it, there's a, it's about a hus- it's about a father who's had his two kids kidnapped, and you're like, it's pretty heavy material, yeah. So lighten things up a bit. It's like you don't want to be triggering people left, right, and center, and they've only just started the game. So I think that you know, they're, they're drunk crying. an hour in, like I can't take it anymore. Exactly. <laughs> So basically, so I think that's the that's the thing with the, with Alex with the Y. And like you said yourself, it was such a lovely contrast from Emma in Contradiction. Then we had Bronwyn. Mm-hmm. Then we have Alex with the Y. And then 15-bit games, I just get to play like a real cranky hotel, uh, a motel clerk. So that's awesome as well. You yeah. know, so it's a lovely, it's just a really nice contrast. to, And it, it's just a lovely platform to get invited back on and work. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it's a gig, but it's just really nice to to get work as well you know it's that's what that's always the 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 dream right because I know like it's probably the same where you are too because I, I noticed when like flipping through because of course I stalk all my guests healthily you. beforehand you know um and and it, you wear a lot of hats in that field too because it looks like you have industrial work and hosting gigs and radio and well obviously commercials voiceovers movies you, you know no, commercials is hilarious. I can't even, like, I can't even sell socks. I don't know what goes on. I've done the odd commercial. Now in I my... know why you're no longer in customer service. Customer service. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more in service. I used to work, I used to work in a call center for, like, cars, like, and I don't drive. I know, yes, I don't drive. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know Americans are like, but we've been driving since we were four. Well, it's because like, we I... don't have that much public transit is the problem. Like, we're too far apart and our public transit's only good in certain areas, you know? So we have to drive or yeah. we won't go anywhere. I need to have that I'm the worst person in an emergency. Quick, anyone have a car? And I'm just like backing away. But no, but if, if someone can take me, that would be really nice. Maybe so you're already going, so. I mean, yeah, exactly. So, um, so I mean, but you know, Instagram, like everything. And it's hard to take it with a pinch of salt because I don't know about you. I sometimes, if I'm having a day, you know, you know, those days that we, not just women, humans get, we're like, well, life's not going anywhere. And look at this person. And look at how, look how amazing they look. Post four filters and a bit mm-hmm. of face tune, which I do not agree with. Lads, can we stop with the face tune? Stop I, it. Seriously, for about a year of my life, I thought everyone had bunny ears and large eyes. Oh, Jesus. 
I was like, that's all anybody looks like. I was like, I'm totally convinced. That's just how everybody looks nowadays. And I'm never going to be, prove me wrong. <laughs> You're going to be pleasantly surprised as you walk out your house once the warranty is over. Everyone's eyes are so tiny. I don't understand. <laughs> what happened to your six pack? And that's another thing. You're like, stop it. Stop. It's okay. Where was I going with this? I, I don't, don't remember now. But okay. it's been lovely and I'm just letting it happen. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, so commercials, yeah, no, I don't don't do a lot, I don't work a lot, like, for example, my boyfriend, he's an actor, and he's just a commercial king, that, that mofo, uh, he'll just go into a cast, he's like, oh, he'll just get, he'll just book the commercial, and I'm like, I mean, I'm obviously very happy for him, there's no professional jealousy, but there's a part of me that goes, why? My husband's also an actor, I understand, and I'm like, I went to that same casting house, and all right, but no, baby, I'm sorry, it's great, it's lovely, I love it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that fine line of supportive, but also, <laughs> God damn it, actors, you know. I know, and like you said, when you go for the same thing, and obviously, he's going for the male parts, like, there's no, there's no, well, like, sometimes you go in and they don't know, like, it could have gone either or, so they'd be oh. like, well, because we actually, I, he, him and I did actually have an audition for the same thing one time, and it was for, like, <laughs> And it, it was some extra bit part. It had two lines, but like the way it read, it could have gone male or female. Like it really didn't matter. So that just tells you the casting director's like, it's fine. If whoever just nails right. it is fine, you know? Right. So that was nerve wracking. Neither of us got it though. So I guess at the end of the day, we can, oh, but you should have gotten, yeah, but okay. you should have really, you know, and then Aww. go have your drink together, commiserate. Yeah. So. <laughs> What about you commercials? Do you do do you do a lot of commercials? I really don't do much of any of it anymore, honestly. I've just been kind of doing my own thing and then pretending right. like I'm going to do more. And then I get overwhelmed at the thought of all of the things that I wanted to do. And then I watch YouTube all day. <laughs> I think I have the, near the end of YouTube, though. If anybody needs any recommendations about how YouTube wraps up, I'll let you know. It's... Uh, it's frightening. It's frightening. Do you do stand up? You should do stand up. You, you know what do. is so funny? You're the second person this week that said something about that. I've never done stand up a day of my you life, and it's just kind of funny. You're the se- this week, this week alone. Well, wait, what is today? Saturday. Yes. Yeah, so it was this week. <laughs> like, what day of the week is it? Hold on. Oh, oh listen, no. Actually, um, so we'll go back. I don't to- have a routine though. Yeah. Oh, no, but you could, but your niche would be streaming and the world of Twitch. There aren't many stand-up comedians that are talking about that. And people like me would be your key audience because you could teach us about the world through comedy and sat- satire or satire. You literally so just gave me like three ideas in my head right now. Yes. You see, everything happens for a reason. By the way, as an, yeah, you write down that mental note. <laughs> if I don't write it down. I have don't ADD and the attention span of a fly sometimes. I know so. what it's like working live and you're there talking to the guest you're like i've just forgotten to switch off the oven in my house are you going yeah so tell me about that really important thing while you're texting going is anybody in the house please make sure the house is on fire uh, I know. oh no i'm pretty much like hey guys i'll be right back and then i'm like yeah, yeah. it's fine we'll do this <laughs> they're used to either like the sound not working when we first start or sometimes i look like i'm in a stop motion video or it's kind of a running joke with me and technology that i just exist around it and it will break so so far i'm happy today that the only thing that happened was for some reason your video moved but oh, i well, just scooched this, this you right good. back over so so far we're we're, we're nailing we're nailing it Gal, if that's the, if, if that's your most pressing problem in the day i think we're doing okay yeah so yeah so we've talked about your stand-up comedy career great yes, when that will be soon be i need a right. i need a manager we'll get on that here <laughs> May, see we should have just done an improv here that's what it oh. is next up uh improv, the improv with Anna and Lace. we'll come up with a situation here i always love to throw people off like that and it throws me off which is even better no not like that but like like you said yourself great improv is amazing however there's a lot of bad improv and i've i've witnessed it because i i support my friends mm-hmm. and i think that i think they should all get something in the hat afterwards you know to buy a drink just in the being bar able to stand up there and oh. just having the guts to do it one deserves its own praise really and truly yeah so shout out to that but maybe can we just practice within the realm oh, of yeah. improv can we just you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. a little bit more rehearsal. That's what I asked for. It's and a I'll- skill. I've often said that. It's a skill that you can lose and something you can also practice. I actually took this one. We're totally whatever. We're talking about whatever now. So like, 
<laughs> the, one of the drills I remember my teacher saying was just pick an object. I had a clip for some reason right here because I was eating potato chips in here the other night. So I'll use this as an example. Um, yeah. And then just to talk about it. Yeah. So like you'll yeah. go through the house and be like, I really love this clip. It does such a great job. Sometimes it actually could hold my hair back. And I really love the purple color. It fits so nice into my purse. It's really fun if I'm nervous. Also, I could sit here and just kind of click it around. And the magnet that's on the back is really cool because I could stick it to whatever that it could. Um, also, I think it could be like a fun earring so I could hang it right there. And then you would just sit there and keep doing that until you've 100% ran out of things to say about whatever that object is. That's a really good little trick. I'm good telling woman. you, it really does help be a little bit faster when you're staring at a thing and maybe need to incorporate it somehow. And then oh. I quit doing it for a while, but it just literally any object and just nice. keep going with it until you feel like you ran out of something to say, put it down and maybe in an hour, pick up another object and try it again. You know? No, like a mental hit workout. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you very much. This is a show that keeps on giving. <laughs> this is a gift back and forth. I tell you, this is what we learned. But I do, I will say that like good improv is amazing. And I love oh. when people can really hit it on the head because yeah. I, just that skill, we do it every day in our regular life. But for some reason, when we're put on stage and told we have to be funny or something, it seizes up. And I think we got to get it out of our head that we have to be funny when we get up there and just let the situation be the comedy and just work within it too. So I'm so not saying I'm good at it. Like I can do it within a character. I've never done just get up there and ask the audience something and go. I've always been like in a dinner theater. So I already had a character. So I just improv in that character. Well, I'm sure you did. But well, we're, we're going to make you um, uh, a stand-up comedy star, so it's fine. I'm excited for this. I've never done comedy stand-up like that. So let's let's see. I'll get my own laugh track and everything. <laughs> make me feel better. And if nothing else, you can just laugh at the laugh track. Why does she think she's so special? <laughs> I can't hear you through Twitch, guys. So I have to make my own way. Oh my God, please just do a stand up comedy special. Just you, just in front of your green screen with your audience and just waiting for the laughter. That would just be, that would be great if you could rehearse the stand up bit with the points that you think are funny. <laughs> and <then> like, <laughs> the things that I think is funny. That's good. <laughs> If you'd like. So how much did they tell you with the with the road to nowhere? So you do know your character. Are there some lines involved? Because I know with me, like I said, I just stood in front of a green screen and said, here you go. Well, all I knew, they, for first thing, the part, actually, fair play to 15-bit games because apparently the clerk was going to be male. Love it. So, so well done. So they're, you know, they're, they're, they're at the frontier. Mm. And they gave me the, um, oh, what's it? Shit's Creek. Is, you know that show? Yes. So they gave me, they gave her, um, they gave me that character. The what's her name? What's her name? The lead. The the the. She wears plaid. the daughter she, or or um the mom. Bobby is no. What's her name? Stevie. Stevie. I always is forget people's Stevie? like actual legit names. And uh, she's she ha well she's the lead in it and she just wears plaid and she has like dark hair and a fringe. Oh well, because if it's the mom, she wears like wigs and extravagant clothing. No, it's, like, no, different it's the younger one. The, the daughter yeah uh, oh god anyway i so know now i'm gonna have to google it they they're used to me never remembering names to anybody TV. so i was like oh crap this is not gonna go well if i have to remember it but i do know the show well and love it well, that's my reference point so they gave me that and then they're like um can you audition in american now the good thing is irish people can pull off american accents because as you know we went over to your country and in a, 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 a lot of us have gone over. So it's essentially just an extension. So dragged out a stand, extension of, of the Irish accent. So so I did a few takes and then they sent it off and they were like, and the good thing is, um, oh, Dean is, well, the, Dean and David are Australian and Martin Morris oh, okay. is French Canadian. So nothing to do, obviously they understand an American accent, but the fact that they're not native helps in that sense. They're not okay. like, they're not, they, they come like that's not Chicago or that's not from us. So they're like, okay. Pretty much know, the right. American accent, just do everything in your nose and close to like the center of your mouth, and you're good. So you've got the R. It's roticity. I'm just, you know, because you know, because <laughs> we just well, no, we just wanted to stand out. I don't know. We shook our finger and all that other stuff. We're like, we're free. <laughs> do the language bad and not the imperial system and blah blah blah. You know, like we just shook our finger. Why do you not have like? What is the American's issue with the letter U? 
as in color. Oh, neighbor. like why we miss small things. I don't know. My joke answer is, again, we just wanted to be different because we're children. It's just so bizarre. We want to be unique. I- you're like, what What happened to you? What Did it do something? Did it upset you? I did think it's up- just when you want to be more fancy. Oh, but the flavor of this thing, you know? And I'm just like, it has a flavor. Maybe that's what we are. Like, it's not that fancy. Where the forefathers were like, no, we will have none of this. <laughs> I don't know. We ran out of ink in our quill. One of the letters had to go, all right? And so we decided it would work with just the O. I love that. That's the 25th Amendment that no one talks about. It's like... We shall remove the the letter U to save ink. (laughs) Capital idea. Oh, Lord. Um, So so back to 15-bit games on that. Oh, this is so much fun. So, yeah, (laughs) she's just... She's like a real, she's like a real cranky motel clerk. She's like you or me, you know, when you're working, dealing with the public and she just says things that you and I would love to say, but don't because we would get fired, but because there's nobody in the motel because it doesn't have anyone in there. She can say, so she's a fun character. And again, a lovely jump from Alex with a Y to Bronwyn, you know, telling the card readers. And then Mm -hmm. Emma was just really... Emma should just have broken up with Simon and just be done with it. I mean, I'm not but, you know, say anything, but you know, like, them's the breaks. Them's, them's the, breaks. the breaks. Them's the too breaks. Much of, too much Simon's homebrew. That's what happened. <laughs> but that, I mean, I still think that's really cool being involved in that project. Cause I know we were talking about that uh, when I had you on with shape shifting detective and everything. Cause contradiction was yeah. the first 100% full FMV game. And that- it's a wonderful game. Mm-hmm. It's just tremendous. And Tim Fallon is, I mean, for the gamers out there, he's like a rock star because he did all the music back in the day and mm-hmm. you know, he had all this following. So, and he just has this amazing critical eye. And what, and I mean, I don't, I, script writing at the best of times is a mission, but how. I admire all of them that do that with branching I, narratives and stuff, because I mean, you've really got to think it like that through line. And then if they do a sequel that picks up the last save file and continues it, I get even more impressed because like when they do like little hints and throwbacks to your first one, I'm like, my God, it's like to cheap. think of all of that stuff, you know? Exactly. Like, well, it's brilliant. So I have to thank Tim and especially shout out to uh, John Geiler who played Ryan yes. Rand. Yes. He's also a good friend because he was doing the casting, basically. So it's nice oh, to Oh, that's nice. Yes. I think so my I, running joke with him the whole time is I just needed to know, did he ever finish the drink? <laughs> I like, I've been wanting to know that for a really long time. I maybe should have asked him on Twitter. I don't know, but. I mean, I could ask him eventually, but I mean, we can both ask him. In fact, if everyone asked him, maybe. That's true. Maybe we need to. No, I don't. I don't need to storm Twitter. I shouldn't do that to people because I don't know if that'll go sideways and it'll be my fault. But I have one because it was kind of a joke. And I understand how they're filmed, like continuity. When you're making a decision, they're just doing the idle thing. But the drink never got empty. And he took so many sips that it was just a joke at the end of it. I'm like, I don't know if he ever. How how drunk even is he now? He's gonna giggle when I when I when I mention it to him as well. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That's good. Okay, let's see. That's all. Weasel my way in with him now too. So are you still doing radio? I'm. I'm. Well, I was going to start, and then the thing that we shan't speak of happened. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. um, and then my good friend Gigi Alamarosa, who's the other half of the musical act that I really can't come up, but I really do want to talk about the story of how it came to be. So yeah, we can figure out a way of how we can talk about that. He is now the owner of the radio station, Barcelona City FM, everyone. So if you like your house music and your DJs and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's now just music, really, because back in Barcelona, we tried different chat shows. And Barcelona is not like L.A. It's not like or a big city where people drive to work and it's an hour and a half. No, it's Barcelona. Right. You walk to work or there's no people don't get up at seven to start rush hour. It starts at like half eight or nine. So it just didn't it didn't Sounds make sense. Very smart, actually. actually. Sounds so much nicer. <laughs> I mean, public transport is great. So I mean, yeah. there is traffic, but people don't really, it's not, people don't listen to the radio the way back home in Ireland or in the UK or in the States. Like, they don't know. Like, they're like, oh, the sunshine, let's go on the beach. Oh, the kids are in school, whatever, sangria. Like, it's not, mm. bah, bah, oh, what's the latest? Much more talk? relaxed lifestyle. Not everyone's feeling like they had to have been there 10 minutes ago. 
God, yeah, in the, yeah. some level. I'm sure there'll be somebody going, no, it's not like that. I live in Barcelona. <laughs> There's always that one person that's overworked and like, I <laughs> beg to differ, differ. Yeah. but that's true. Shut up, you have a job. Um, <laughs> right. When people are allowed out again, then yes, we will reconvene and it'll be a different show just talking to music producers and talking about music. But that leads me on to Donald and Trump. Yes, now, wasn't sure if we were going to talk about that. Yeah, but you, you did have a, I loved that photo. I should have put it up. I should have put it up. Here's the thing. If you, this, it was a single that was released about three years ago. And I'm not even going to, I won't even name the title. People can figure stuff out themselves. You've yes. got people clever. Yes. Um, so this is what happened. Gigi and I were recording a show from one of the producer's houses because I don't know why, but we could make it to the studio. Then we started drinking beers. And then Gigi was like, this is new disco. And basically new disco isn't really new disco. It's just, it's just disco. But the names of the artists would be like Samuel Beckett, mm -hmm. um, High Five. It would be something. And I just went, Donald and Trump. And he was like, oh my God, that's hilarious. I was like, let's make a song. And he was like, yes, drink some beer, drink some beer. <laughs> He owns a record label, so I basically just like I do with mo most things in my life, I invited myself into to making a single with him. So there's nothing political. It's not like Bruh. it was literally a case of because there's a new disco guy called Michael and Jackson. That's it. It was oh, splitting okay. up two names. It was that. It's you were just following the trend. It was just a play on words. It was like, if I can split it in two, yeah. I mean, it could have been anything. It could have been seesaw, like for all I care. And it was just... actually a while a enough ago too. Yeah, oh, like if you put it in the context. It right. was so long ago. It was three, um, yeah, two or three years ago. So, mm. I mean, he was already in power. It was fine. There wasn't anything to do. And we basically just got a, a clip of what he had said and just stuck it on and named it the same thing. Um, quarantine, I, I got it. I'm, you know that? that website called Fiverr. I don't know if you yeah. know it exists. Yeah. So I was like, I know I'll give Gigi a surprise and I'll get someone to do like a cool music video with like anime and stuff. And it turned out brilliantly sent it to my manager. He's like, don't release that again. I was like, why? Cause it's really political. Are you not awake? Do you not know what's going on in the world? Like, but this came out three years ago. He's like, no, don't send it anywhere. And Gigi was like, Hey darling, when can we release the new video? I'm like, we can't. We just can. So now it's just a very, it's like a gift. I, well, I, I, I mean, that could still be something very special you did for a friend of yours and that you two can share. And I know I see it. <clears throat> yeah. You're like, but I worked on that. I, want it there. I was so excited when the, um, when the graphic art, like designer, he was like, oh, here's the video. I was like, oh man, I was so, I was pumped because it was the second week of the thing we shan't speak of. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm being proactive. And then my manager's like, no. So, so yeah, so that's my story of how it came about. And let me reiterate, it's not political. It was a play on words. And you can blame, if anyone, blame new disco. Blame but, the genre of new disco. And so that's that. They started the trend. <laughs> and, I, and honestly, I remember about a year and a half ago, somebody on Twitter um, said, oh, uh, I was going to buy, I can't remember which FMD game, but they're like, oh, I was going to buy it, but now I'm not seeing... Um, your political uh, inclinations. I was like, I felt kind of famous for about a split second because that only happens to be like you actually had control over someone's control. buying power for a minute. I was like, what is all that about? And then, um, and then I, I apologized to whoever the maker of the game was at the time. Like, I'm really sorry. We just lost a sale. They're like, you're fine. It's you know, they but, probably weren't anyway, if we're going to, that's how I rationalize. And I'm like, they just wanted you to be upset about it. You know, we recorded the show and whatever happened, the producer gave us a dodgy cable. So the whole show sounded like it was underwater. Mm -hmm. So not only, yeah, it was, oh, I'm telling you, I've done some weird stuff on radio. Uh, not like, not weird, not like, not like arrestable. Like, I'm not going to get arrested. But, you know. <laughs> Is this where I'm supposed to stop you now? You're like, no, 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 no. But just things like, I, I remember, oh God, there was one time that we thought we were broadcasting and we weren't. We just weren't. We were literally just two crazy people in a room talking to people. We can relate to that one, right, folks? Or when you thought you were done broadcasting and you're just now, uh, like, I've, all, like, not had one of those full-on moments, but I, I've seen some of those. Uh, God bless them. They just, they didn't close OBS. 
Oh, or the mute button over tracks and you'd think you muted it and then a song came on and you'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And then the manager of the station would be like, I can hear you. And you're like. <gasps> the worst that would happen for me is you would just see me here probably just like stuffing my face with garbage food and, and watching a video game and a streamer or something, you know, so it would be the like least the weirdest mukbang ever shouldn't she <laughs> just, she's not she's even talking, talking to us i don't even understand yeah I'm, it happens and it's we deal with it and we move on you probably get put into some youtube compilation later on without any credit <laughs> at least if you're gonna steal my shenanigans give me credit would you at least i don't know my shenanigans that's brilliant that sounds like a euphemism for something he tried to steal my shenanigans <laughs> along with the tomfoolery that was going on is... <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i sorry. can just sit here for you know we've almost been at this an hour too and i feel like we've been here like 20 minutes like it's just flown by <laughs> I don't know if you guys are having fun, but I'm having a blast. That's all I can say. <laughs> I did come across a little quarantine party dance thing that I thought was really adorable. Oh, gotcha. Well, here. So can you see the screen? Because I, I did. I did put together just a very short compilation of the dance, if you don't mind, because it did you? I did. You I don't know if you can see the screen. I can see myself. I mean, that's never that's never a good thing. I can't. No, I let, should I should I make it bigger? No, I'm not no, gonna touch anything. I don't know if you can see it, but you had a quarantine dance party. Yeah. So my friend John from 4D I TV. It. So he was like, um, so he was like, yeah, we're gonna do like a quarantine dance and get all our friends to dance and things like that. So that was fine. But if you 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 saw the video, I did. Like, I was actually showing a little bit of it because I loved your little thing. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you for watching and sticking, like, I mean, sticking to the, I mean, it's like, it's like five days long, that goddamn quarantine video. But I remember when I pressed play. <laughs> That's kind of long. <laughs> it's bloody long. It was I'm like, like an hour and a half or something. And I'm like, oh. I wasn't sure what we were doing, but I'm like, I'm going to find her in it. I'm going to find very, her in it. And then I did find it. Yeah. Very sweet. I remember just watching it going. Like, I mean, I think after about 10 minutes, it was not it. And then by about minute 15, I'm like, what am I, hang on, what am I doing? I've got, I've got how did they so film that? Like, was it just like a friend of yours? I just assumed you had filmed it, sent it in, and then let them put it together however they were going to do it. Yeah. He was like, uh, he was like, just record 30 seconds of yourself um, with generic EDM, electronic dance music. Um, it's popular, man. And then, I know, the kids love it. The kids. <laughs> Is that like how you do the candy dance or whatever with the like the glow sticks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl, that is. I don't know what it is. That's a wedding dance. That's how you dance when you oh, get invited to a wedding. I do the, the duck dance. This is the least sexy twitch. I don't think we're going to be getting any hot takes regarding I this. I guess my boobs are bringing them in today, but we'll 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 keep trying. We'll keep trying. It's bound to have that moment anyway, but. Well, yeah, so that, like you've even been creating movies for YouTube. That was fun again with Rupert. I mean, God damn it! I, I need to start. We're just you a guys need to start deal. your own company like that. Like oh that. god! Oh god, no, darling. Oh, wait. Austin Business, you are you crazy? Oh, for God's I, sake! I don't know. Um, lockdown. <laughs> lockdown is uh, directed by Craig Griffith, so that was that was actually really fun, and I actually did record it here. Mm -hmm. and there and um as you can see i've got a ring light hang on let me just bring this down. can i bring it down that is the one thing it... i i need to invest in apparently is that ring light i'm telling you it does make people's eyes pop so much and i well, watch them here's the thing so when we obviously we do a lot of self-taping and stuff like that um and there's only so much you can do with natural light. And then if, like, for example, if you miss the cutoff point of daylight, you're just sending in what can be potentially, mm -hmm. it's like a witness protection program, self-tape. And your your agent is like, where are you? And you're like, I'm the one, I'm here. I'm and it's here. locked down. I'm in. You're I'm like, in where, character. what are you doing? So, yeah, so are we invested in the ring light? Now, depending on how close you are, it does give you the, the YouTuber mm -hmm. eyes, as I call them, the, you know, the, like, yeah, ah. the, the rings are right there in the center of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, just make sure that you don't bleach your skin out so much that when you walk in, they're like, Jesus. 
We thought you were 20. And you're like, That's why I always have to turn the brightness down. Yeah. But, I, I mean, but it's glow, you're, it's really. You, yeah, but you just get, you start there fiddling with the, with the, with the moderator there. You're like, oh, what if I just leave it like this? Look at how I look. And you're like, but no, no, you're going for like a 16th century wench. Bring it down. That definitely Stop. had a ring light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, invest in one. It, ma- it makes me feel like I'm an, I'm an influencer of sorts. Uh, I got one of those little <laughs> ones that was, it was supposed to be for your phone. So it has the little clip on it where you'd put your phone yeah. to take little selfies. It was like 20 bucks. I thought it would probably be about the same. The quality is definitely not the same, uh, but it was 20 bucks and I just, whatever. It's a filler light for me really, but uh, it works. Nice. So, so do you do that when you're doing selfies or when you're doing live? Like, it's never know, left uh, the back of my computer since I got it. And now it's so, it's like a filler light for me because I'm very white. So I can't have the lights directly on me or it just like blows everything out. So I have lights literally just facing the walls. And then if it's a little dark right in here, I'll turn that on down against that and it just fills in the dark spots if I need it. <laughs> genius <gasps> when you're a starving I, artist you get create my microphone right now is rigged up on books because it broke yesterday yeah i admit it that's why i'm not Aww. touching it i'm scared it'll fall. <laughs> one of these days i'll make it out for some duct tape and that's really how you fix things oh um, god yeah yeah so you know from last time how about i just ask you a couple like really dumb questions Please bring it on. Because I always say, and then and then we'll get to uh, some questions here. Uh, we have, hey, we do have a couple that's been fl- uh, that came in from awesome. chat there, so we'll get that open. Um, but yeah, this dumb stuff that like I asked last time, you know. Um, so like, so what's the strangest pet you've ever wanted to own, or maybe you have actually owned? No, the strangest pet actually that I've ever wanted to own. Um, I mean, we're thinking we're thinking of getting. Um, it's not a hamster, but it's a, oh, a guinea pig. We're a thinking pig? of getting a, yeah, we're thinking of getting a guinea pig. So I think that's, you know, that's going to be our cool. child. I think. I, I think. have a, a friend of mine that has a, has a guinea pig and I, we named them lick em up. I forgot what it all stands for though. Like each initial stood for something and then we put it all together and made that noise. And apparently she kept it on there this whole time. So it was kind of a, special. how, how would you freak out? Would you rather see now this could be a nightmare. 100 guinea pigs, normal size, or one massively giant guinea pig that's like bigger oh. than your house. Oh, Jesus, no, the giant one, because it'd be like, what the, what, what did you we defeat, feed it last you night? You think you could defeat 100 regular size guinea pigs before like one giant one? I think so, because I'm sure you would find a chair or some type of elevation system. That's fair. You can climb on said roof. Exactly. Well, instead of trying to reach the other guinea pig, <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, hanging out up there. <laughs> well, now that we got a little insight into this earlier, if you yes. were arrested, what would your friends and family assume it was for? Oh, they would assume the worst. Actually, no, they would no. Assume- <laughs> they went straight there. And they're like, she's not getting not, out. Not murder, not murder, but just be like, oh. You know, how did you not know it was illegal? And why did you say you carry that suitcase for that person? You know what I mean? And they're like, is this yours? You're like, no. And they're like, yeah. And then I just be in like a, oh, like a jail somewhere that's not very pleasant with cockroaches as my cellmates. Um, so yeah, so that's, or um, probably get arrested for not, not working out when I was supposed to be working out. Are yeah, you getting arrested because like, you were working out these days? It's upside down world now. I left the house. It That's is. I got arrested. It is. It is. So I'll probably get arrested for going to the hairdressers because I have a hairdresser's appointment. So we're allowed out for that. I don't understand. I'm gonna get arrested probably just for like smoking. And they're like, "Why are you not running?" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, yes, I." Am. <laughs> this opens up the lungs if you do both. All right. <laughs> Like, I've read this from, like, 1920s magazines, and they wouldn't lie then. They totally knew what they were talking about when we did that. So who do you think would play you in your movie of your life? I, I thought about this. I'm Zoe Deschanel. <gasps> I love her. Yes. And I think she could nail it, too. Yeah. I think she would do a better version of me than even I would. I mean, she. I would just be like, I just want to be you. I, I just want to be her. Would you cast so yourself, she, like, as an extra? Oh, 
yeah, I know, man. I just love her so much. And she's just, and she's so goddamn, and she wears, and she makes the bangs work. You know, she just works it and she can sing. She and, really can. She is kind of a triple threat there, eh? Like, I, and she's funny. She's so funny. Like, drives me. I, triple threats. What's all that about? I remember, like, learning about triple threats later on in my career. Um, well, I mean, not later on, but, like, when you're 15, 16, it's like, oh, yeah, in America. Same damn fact. You're like, I'm a triple threat. I'm a really good cappuccino. Like, walk in a straight line. And speak Spanish. I was going to say, being bilingual already gives you a leg up on, on most of them there, too. Well, yeah, but I can't sing. But I can, oh, just, anyway, triple threat. Have you ever tried to sing a show tune? I used to do musicals when I was younger, but that was before I started smoking cigarettes. Now, I don't know if there's a correlation between my post-smoking cigarettes career and my pre-smoking cigarettes career. And I don't want any blah, 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 blah. I was going to say, like, I tend to, like, I'm not, I don't really sing well either. And I could say that it could be argued that back in the day I sang a lot better. I never practiced it, never really honed in I, on it or whatever, drunk karaoke and whatnot. But I found with yeah. a lot of show tunes, as long as you're just confident and belted out, you're going to sound fine because we're really more into, like, the attitude of the music and the story that you're telling. I just see you in Chicago, like the, the musical Chicago, because I've always wanted to be, that's the only musical I've ever wanted to be in, just for the prison song alone. It's amazing, right? It's a great musical. That You can put that in your stand-up show. Just start singing all the show tunes ever wanted. I didn't do it. See, that's all you got to do is just belt it out. But if I'd done it, I bet you you would have done the same. And then you just go on. This is your Netflix special, by the way. You're, it's okay. This is great. You've got material. This is great. <laughs> just the, the, the quarantine ramblings of Lacey of Finley and just all edit it together nice and neat and tight. There you go. I'm telling you, you got something there, my love. And I'm sure your, your viewing public will agree as well. So there you go. I do have some good people that still come around regardless of what I do. For whatever reason, I love you for it. I really do. Because I'm always like, if anybody can listen to me for as long as they do, because I'm so loud. It's so excitable most of the time that I, I even have it as a warning on my channel. Like you may not want to wear earbuds. You're so like, sweet. It can happen, and I don't mean for it to do it. You are uh, adorable. I like, love it. <laughs> uh, okay, and th this will be my last dumb question. Then we'll move on to the ones that uh, people that are watching have put on. But if animals could talk, which one do you think is the most rude, and why is it ducks? Oh, uh, well, that's a good one. Hmm. Huh. Does it have to be a real animal or a mythical one? I mean, we can make up our own rules at this point. If you know, you, I think you've made up a good we, animal. I mean, like a unicorn would be really pretentious. You'd think they'd be so cute and they'd be like... That's probably true. Because there's nobody cat. like me. Bloody house cats. Bloody house cats are rude. Because you come home and they look at you. They're like, why are you, why are you here? And you're like, because I live here. Because I live here. And you're here because of me. And they're like, oh, whatever. no, 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 no. They just view you as a roommate. That's always yeah, been my joke with cats. You don't have a cat. You know a cat. That's, I love that. That is really clever. Oh, that is good. And they will so come to you when they want, and that's it. Boyfriend or with or belly girlfriend. rubs, you get like exactly three, and then that's it. Then your arm yeah, will get the, turned to shreds. They're like, uh, and I'm gone. And I'm, they're, they're mean girls. That's what they are. They're, they're cats are just mean girls, essentially. So there you go. Now, now I'm gonna get all the cat owners to like, <laughs> you don't know cats. You've upset cats. And one could argue you don't either. <laughs> You're just giving me something. All it. right. But I do have, it looks like we got two questions from chat here because I want to be respectful of your time. We've been about an hour. Like I said, I could go on, but you've probably got life, you know, to live. Uh, but the first one, let's hear from Mist Explorer. Anna Rosa, do you think you can persuade Pedro to be in an FMV game? Pedro Miguel, Pedro, Pedro Miguel Arce. It just says Pedro, Pedro. So I, I will pardon my ignorance. I don't know who he's referencing there. Well, so we do the PNA show Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So Pedro Miguel, I say big shout out. He is, um, he's like a really good actor, and he has his old cult following. He was in um, True Blood and 
a million Ooh, films. Yeah. Maybe I just so, need yeah, to look so at his face because, again, I'm bad with names. So Pedro Miguel Arce. So, yeah. So um, now who's who's the a mystic? Is this a, Mystic so who's Explorer the, is the screen name of who asked it. So mystic uh, Explorer. I would love him to be in an FMV game. The thing is, his rates are very high. He's like a... In demand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think his agent would like him maybe to do something different but fm but he has like these rates and fmv has these rates now do you guys have to contend with like your own actors union as well that is do they let you do both non-union and union gigs or like europe is fine yeah europe is okay okay europe is you're fine they're like all right and they're like get work good luck well done um you know what i mean obviously there's um because it's very different over there, isn't it? If you if, if you you're are union here, you can't do non-union work. Yeah, like that's that's, and I and, and I mean I can agree with like they did fight for a lot of rights and stuff for actors and stuff that never had it before, and I like I do get it. But if yeah. you're like one of those that are still trying to work as an actor, you almost feel like you shouldn't become union too soon because it could take away a lot of other potential work. So sure. So so to yeah. So to answer your question, Mystic, um, it would be great to work with them. Um, but it would be down to his management team. And also because FMV, as, even though it's an amazing genre, the budgets are not oh, the same. Oh, much unless, different, yeah. Unless it's her story or like the, like there's either really, really top or just or it's, there's no middle ground really yeah. for FMV. They have a huge also. budget because they probably got like some sort of movie producer or something that's backing it a little bit too. Because we've seen some really high quality uh, interactive movies that 100%. Like, Unreal. Yeah, Unreal. it's great. Yeah. It's yeah. a good time for F and V. I have to say, I'm very excited for it. Like we've over the last several years, I'd say at least five for sure. We've seen a nice, huge uptick of just great quality of F and V. It, so, it had a moment. It wasn't wasn't doing so good. So it's great to see the revival. <laughs> you know, I've been with it through and through. You just got to learn to lean into the nonsense of it all and just have fun instead of trying to pick it apart like it's some work of art that you know deserved an oscar i don't know i'm talking about like from the 90s and stuff like that <laughs> I agree you just gotta lean into the nonsense of it all and just have fun i love it i love it so there, i hope that answered your question then Mystic yes explorer. hopefully mr explorer got that answered for you let's see the next one is from indie gamer 007 so Ooh. does alex just go around fighting evil aliens and who is a better fighter alex or bronwyn well, that's a oh, that's a great question. That is a really yeah. good question, yeah. Double O Seven, bloody hell! So no, Alex, Alex of the Y is a hacker. So what she does is she seeks the truth, um, and God bless her. I mean, she, oh, I really wouldn't ask her to fight anything on purpose. I mean, God love her. No, 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 no. Um, Bronwyn, no, Bronwyn would just be like. Just like I was going to say, I think Bronwyn could definitely win oh, yeah. that. From the little bit that I've seen of uh, yeah. the, the clips of she Alex that he's... Yeah. Ninja star tarot cards. You should like, do that and then just hit him with a kill. <gasps> I'm going to write that down. I was going to say, you better. Like, I could see, get get with Tim. Like, we've got to shoot just a little short. And oh it should God. start off very serious. Like, it's, maybe we shouldn't give it away right now. But, like, start <laughs> off very serious. You know, like, we'll talk. So there you go, Indie uh, Game Developer 007. Like, that's a great question. No, that but is Bron a great question. She'd just stab you in the face with her heel and then be like, and then be really sarcastic about telling you your own future, you know, as, <laughs> as she's stabbing you. Here's the Being card ironic. right in the eye. Yeah, it's ironic. So yeah, so that's a great. If you've got any other questions there, I'm happy to answer. Uh, <laughs> looks like I have one more from Chaka Gozio. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why do you hate cats? And can well, you sing definitely. for us? Why do I hate cats? I'll tell you what. Cats haven't given me a reason to love them yet. That's fair. There you go. Until they love you and respect you back. You just feel like it's you got to have some mutual understanding there of how this is going to go down. Two-way street, baby. It's a two-way street, especially if my pocket is paying for your Turn dinner. Turn around, lift your ass up at them and walk away. I'd be like, follow me. Here we go. <laughs> But he also wanted to know if you could sing for us. And that's up to you. I don't have a shame gene. Most actors don't. But. I, 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 I'm not going to sing. I, I wish I could help you out. I would sing a duet, but I don't know that we know any of the same songs, like word for word, because I end up making up most of them because I'm sad that most artists don't remember the words to their own songs. <laughs> I'm singing along. I'm like, that's not what they said. But, um, yeah. <laughs> We can do that 
for the next show. In fact, you can incorporate that into your Netflix special. You know what? We need to get you to download Twitch things. Okay. It's a karaoke game, basically. And so I've, oh. I've streamed it here before. Twitch made it specifically uh, for Twitch, so you're not constantly getting copyright strike and stuff because you are still singing other people's songs, but they changed it just enough and got permission and all this kind of stuff for you to be able to do so. And um, yeah, when you download it, it's like game. You can put the camera in, you pick out, they have so many songs now to choose from and you could just put it up there and then they play the music and you sing like karaoke and you can challenge other people and send your video out into the world and have somebody say like, I don't know, me sing the duet part and then we can put that together. Well, I've literally just written down, well, no, I wrote down Twit, and then I got too excited twit before I finished the Twit is pretty close to the actual, so, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, great. So there you go. <laughs> like, so, I yeah. literally will send you the link, and I, like, I, I play this day game much to their demise. I love it. I will and, sing and the karaoke. And back to the question at hand, uh, the day a cat loves me back, I will sing. There you go. Once, show me a cat that loves me, and I will show you a woman who will sing. That is so fair. There you go. That okay. is fair to make demands back. I don't blame you. Oh, oh, oh we you did so have much. one come in, if you don't mind. Oh, yes. From Camille Overcreek says, can I ask what's your favorite shapeshift character aside from Bronwyn? And uh, here's a quick shout out, actually. Camille Overcreek has been doing some wonderful fan art. Of oh, yeah? Did I see that in the, in the I might have seen I it in the Devecki Discord. Discord. And you retweeted it, right? Is that the same one? Because yes, that, yes. that was really, that was really cool. I know like, some amazing really? stuff happening. Yeah. So yeah. So my other favorite character, I really like the character of Rain, actually. I think he did a tremendous job. So mm-hmm. here, all the, like, all, like, oh, I'm, you know, all my, my single ladies, all my <laughs> friends, are, like, yeah. Ashlyn, and they were all brilliant. They were all, but I think Rain, Nick, Nick is just a very good actor. And um, he just did, uh, like, it's a really interesting character. And the name is cool as well. Rain with a Y. It really, it, see this, the, the uniqueness, we it follows around. It's not just us anymore. I'm not just exactly. anymore trying to do all that. Excellent. I do have to ask, though, with your American accent. Did it sound my American, Southern? My American <laughs> I, I, I have this. I have to ask this now from almost anybody in a different country because we have this running gag going on that every time another country emulates an American accent, or I should say United States, I think it's a little bit weird. We always call us the Americans when there's North America. It includes more than just us. But... <laughs> It always defaults to Southern. So I would love to hear it, if you don't mind. All right. So this is my general standard. This is um, standard American. So I would say, I thought I was talking to the editor of my newspaper. And then I can go real Southern. Like, listen, just because we slept together doesn't give you the right to interfere with my work as a journalist. I See, I, I defaulted to Scarlett O'Hare. That's what I was going to say. Oh, I do declare that if you I, did, my, my good sir... I get so yeah. black menagerie, and you're like, where is it? Yeah, so it does take, um, I do have I to have do- to say that was pretty good, though. Oh, Actually, sorry. I heard just that line right there. So that, that was pretty good. I don't bother to try to do that. When I try to, like, default to British or something like that, I've been told I always go straight for, like, the Queen's British for some reason. For some <laughs> reason, I want them to sound like Julia Child or something That's stupid. And I don't know why it comes out. Or and classic, um, hello, Mary Poppins, you know. <laughs> hello, hello, mate. Yeah, that's all I know. It's like the same when you're trying to emulate the Boston one. You always just say, I parked the car at the Harvard Yard. Like, that's the only line I can say. That's bloody difficult, the Boston accent. God it's damn beautiful. it. I love it. Oh, my God. When a guy starts talking in Bostonian, you're like, oh, yeah, yes. Their anger and their fourth generation Irish connections. And you're like, you're not Irish. Stop it. I'm Irish. It's like. Who? Who? My great, great, great grandfather. Like, stop it. No. Stop it. There you go. I, I want to learn the Irish accent, accent, though. I need to nail that one. Do learn the Irish accent, and then you will be grand. <laughs> we'll round it all out. And to be fair, I know she's not British. <laughs> yeah. I, if, if I ever tried to explain why my brain makes one dot to the next, we could be here for many years. It probably needs to be observed and probably analyzed a little bit. But that's why I always defaulted on being an actor. I'm like, so where, where is that accent from? I'm like, wouldn't you like to know? That's my secret where she lives. Brilliant. So I'm not wrong with how my accent sounds because this is how they sound in my fictional country. So I'm the queen. Prove um, me wrong. 
<laughs> and if the queen sounds like a British Julia Childs to me, that's what it sounds like when it comes out of my mouth. I love oh, it. I love thank it. you so much for being on. I want to be respectful of your time because I know we're, we're running over the hour and everything like that. I've, I've had a fun time. This was fun. Me too. I, I hope you did too. So yeah, definitely. Thank you so, so much. And thank you to everybody else that tuned in as well. And yeah, and I'm sure I'll see you around pretty soon, hopefully. Hopefully. Hope, We've got to get together. Soon. Maybe one of these days I'll actually be able to make it over there. Because I'm still going to, I have it on tape that I was allowed to crash on your floor. So, girl, come to Barcelona. I'll take you out. You, you, look so <laughs> you guys great heard it. Now. I'm going to take it one yeah. step further. You she totally it. offered me a place to stay, right, guys? Like, if I... <laughs> <laughs> You can sleep on the same floor that uh, Rupert Booth slept on. Exactly. So come over. It's all good. And um, yeah, we have to keep we have to keep thinking positively. So yeah, give it time. Oh yeah, we're we're, we're getting we're getting through it. We're getting exactly. through it. Exactly. Good. And stay safe, everyone, as well. Everyone out there that's listening and. And, and even if you do, and even if you do have a cat, treat your cat correctly. Yeah, it's always nice. treat the animals well, of course. Even if they live with you and demand things of you, it's fine. Especially right now, they they definitely getting so much love from you. You almost might have to separate them off, so it's not a huge shock. <laughs> you do have to leave the house again. Be like, where did my human go? That was here for twenty four hours a day for six months or however long. <laughs> Oh, but yes, uh, Chaka, thank you so much. She's put all of her socials in there. Follow Anna Rosa Butler on Twitter. You can follow her on Instagram. Um, shoot, <laughs> wishlist all the video games, buy them up, uh, check out. You've got, I, I mean, you go to her website. That's got a, a lot of the stuff on there too. It's just, you've got, you've done so much. You've done so much. You're and so, it's amazing. You're to very see. kind. You're the best. voice work, the, the movies, the, the, the spoofs, the radios, go check them all out, guys. MySpace, maybe. Are we still on MySpace? Oh, Oh yeah, I went in like about a week, about a, a oh. couple of months ago, and there's, I don't know what happened to MySpace. I mean, half my stuff is gone, but then just some weird pictures are left. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't even remember what the password or what email I use. So it's just there now, and it's fine. Tom's just gonna have to find a new friend. <laughs> uh, but excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, go follow Anna Rosa. As you can tell, amazing. We had a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to try to have her back when Dark Side of the Moon. So definitely follow Tiana Studios on Twitter as well because they don't have it up on Steam yet to wish list. But if you follow his Twitter, he's very good about constantly leaving updates and video blogs about the process. And uh, we had him also on the show last Monday for Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. So it's my show. I'm allowed a little self-bragging here. Go check out that one if you'd like to hear us talk to Darren a little bit more about Dark Side of the Moon. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, man. I'm going to... Anytime. End the, the stream so I can can this VOD, guys. And then in a little bit, we'll be coming back and just play some games and hang out with each other. So hopefully you'll come back then. And if not, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Goodbye.